How can you protect your vote? Former Congressman Brian Barrett has an idea. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Previous hour, we heard from former Alabama Governor Don Siegelman about how his vote got stolen in the 2002 election in one particular Republican-controlled area, uh, a guy who actually had been trained on how to use the software and the voting machines had uh, and the tabulators and was in charge of this tabulator in this county, transferred 6,000, with an even number, 6, 000, 000 votes out of his column and into his opponent's column, giving the election to Bob Riley. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just the beginning of a whole wild story that Don Siegelman has to tell. Um, so today, how do we protect our vote? How do we make sure things like that don't happen? Well, uh, Brian Baird is one of my favorite uh, former congressman. When he was in Congress, he was one of my favorite members of Congress. A good guy. I remember when Brian Baird, uh, when I used to do a local show here in Portland, and he was representing uh, southern uh, Washington state, just north of us. And he came in one day to, to tell us about how he had just discovered a bunch of Republicans were trading uh, stocks on inside information inside the inside their their government offices. It was mind boggling. I, you know, it, uh, Brian Barrett, good guy, and he is and he was the ch the chair of the science and technology subcommittees on energy and the environment, and on the research technology and education subcommittees in the U.S. House of Representatives. He's got a new website. Don't f with my vote, and uh, the website is df like don't f. WMV with my vote.org, DFWMV.org. If you can remember, don't F with my, and you know, you can spell out the word. I can't say it on the air. Um, don't F with my vote.org. Uh, you've got it. And on the line with us right now is the very same former Congressman Brian Baird himself. And uh, Congressman, welcome back to the program. Tell us about uh, DMF, DFWMV.org. Don't, don't F with my vote. Tom, it's so good to see you, first of all. Um, you. And you, you. Yeah, well, it's just been too long. Well, you know, here's the thing. When the U.S. Postal Service started talking about, well, we just may not deliver votes on time, or uh, when they began to take out uh, mailboxes and things like that, I thought, my gosh, if I put my ballot in the mail, I have all, it's an act of faith. I have no way of proving that I actually did that, right? So what would happen if you put your ballot in the mail and then you discovered after the election it never got counted and what if large numbers of ballots from a certain area didn't get counted there's no current way except for our web address dfwmv.org as you said to record that you you win and where you put your ballot in a way that we could get back in touch with you and the same applies really tom if you're voting at the polls and you've been waiting in line for three hours and we know this happens you wait in line two or three hours Eight o'clock comes, somebody says, polling is closed, y'all have to go home. Well, how do you prove you were there? How do you say, wait a minute, I have a constitutional right to vote. These people are, prote are, are preventing me from doing that. How does a judge say, well, Mr. Hartman, how do, we, how do we have any proof that you were actually outside the polling booth? With DFWMV.org, you do have proof. Here's what you do. You just enter your name and address so we can reach back to you if we need to contact you. You can geolocate either by typing in your address or by literally using the geolocate function on your mobile device. And then you take a picture of yourself in front of the ballot box or outside the voting booth. It's that simple. It takes less than two minutes. We'll keep the record. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated solely to ensuring fair elections. We will never use your data for anything other than that purpose. And we're the only tool of its kind designed to protect particularly your mail-in vote. There are a couple other devices that are useful uh, for in-person voting, but it's that simple. And there's nothing like it. And in this election, where swing states could hinge on just a tiny difference, might make a real difference. Yeah. So, hey, buddy, don't F with my vote. Don't F with my vote. Exactly <laughs> right. Or exactly, yeah, dot, dot, dot org is the website. Or fiddle or fuss, whatever you like. But <laughs> Right. Hey, uh, Brian, did, 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 uh, I'm sorry I don't recall how, how it all ended up. Uh, you know, when you had discovered that there were a bunch of Republicans who were trading on inside information inside Congress, and you, you went on a crusade to try to end that. Uh, how did, it, what's the status of that at this moment? Well, we didn't actually have I, the reason I The reason I ask, and forgive the digression, yeah, very yeah, brief right. digression here, is I am convinced that several members of Trump's cabinet 
Um, in particular, Wilbur Ross, who's a, you know, has been called a grifter by Forbes magazine in the last year, um, are trading on inside information right now, and that, the, and that the Trump crime family have been making a fortune on inside information. Um, and I'm just wondering what the status of the legality of all that kind of thing is. Yeah, well, the quick summary is, uh, first of all, we didn't really have proof that people were doing it, but common sense said somebody would, because here was the deal. It was not bright line illegal for members of Congress or their staff or family members to make trades based on confidential information received from their professional duties, their, their uh, elected duties. It's, we know it's bright line illegal for corporations, but, but the question was, we're not members of a corporation, but we get some pretty darn valuable and unique information. What constrains us from doing that? Well, I checked with the SEC and other attorneys and found that there, there was not a bright line information. And plus, Tom, on top of that, members of Congress, unlike corporate CEOs, we didn't at the time have to report our stock trades except for a year later. One year later, we'd sort of batch it and report in this, this public disclosure. But that's so late. So I wrote a bill called the Stock Act, and stock stood for Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge. And stock tr the Stock Act eventually did pass. Only after 60 Minutes did an expose and raise very, the very kind of questions you just talked about. What the Stock Act did is it, is it, it required members of Congress to report within 45 days if they made uh, trades. And then on top of that, uh, it made it bright line illegal to make a trade yourself, to give other people information no, if you knew it was not public, or your family or staff. And you know what, Tom? This does this apply move. to the to the White House? It does apply to the executive branch as well. Now you know the Republicans basically say that, that Trump and, and presumably by extension his family, who he would pardon, uh, uh, are somehow immune to the law itself. But it does apply to the executive branch as well. And it actually, in that case of the Congress, Richard Burr, the former now chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, made trades post classified briefings on uh, COVID made trades that were very favorable to his portfolio. And yeah, so did Kelly Loeffler. That, that came out. Yeah, and Loeffler, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good stuff. So, so Brian, we, we have a, about a minute and a half left before we hit a hard break here. Uh, back to don'tfwithmyvote.org, your, your uh, website, um, which, is, which is great. Uh, number one, I'm assuming that this works no matter what state you're in, anywhere in the country, even though you're from Washington State, which has you know, a really good election system. And yep. uh, number two, is this the kind of thing that was built into H.R. 1? I'm not uh, all that no, you know, familiar is, with at a granular level. This has not existed before. It should, and I'm, I presume it will in the next election, but we don't have time to wait for the next election. You know, for example, Tom, there was a, a ballot box set in fire, one in California, one recently in, uh, in, in Massachusetts, I believe. If your ballot is yep. in that box and it's set on fire and it's destroyed, first of all, how does anybody know to get back in touch with you to say, hey, gosh, your ballot was destroyed, you want to file a provisional? But in a swing area, that could make a huge difference, just a, you know, a couple thousand votes mm -hmm. in a ballot box. And that's already happening, not in an organized way, but that's happening. We've seen postal service workers not deliver ballots, and, and we, you just described sort of nefarious inside jobs that could happen. The key point here is you should want to protect your ballot, and you should want to keep a record of where and when you voted. You know, we're not asking how you voted. That's your business. We would never ask that. But if you take a photo and make a record on dfwmp.org, and it turns out that this election major uh, 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 blockage of votes happens, you have a record of that. And we have a record we can help follow up on. 